Okay, so this is Irwin County Detention Center. These are all the vans that apparently transport the female detainees to Irwin County Hospital where they've apparently been getting these surgeries. And I'm seeing some detainees in the yard right there. I don't see any women, but I think we should just try to go talk to them. What's your sense of what's going on? Well, I, was, I went to a uh, dental appointment. There was a female in the car, and they said they were just up and taking them, giving them surgery to tell them something was wrong with them, giving them surgery. The female detainee told you that? Well, she was telling me, like, a lot of females, they're scared. They don't want to, uh, they don't want to do anything, uh, no type of medical, due to the simple fact of the, what's going on. Hey, how y'all doing? Hi, good. I'm hey. Gianna. Nice to meet you. Hey, I'm, um, could you guys uh, kind of step back for me? Sure, sure. No problem. No problem. Appreciate you. Okay. Thank you. You know, it's hard to get in there. It's hard to reach detainees. That's part of the MO of this detention center right now is just limit the amount of information that's coming out of here. LaSalle Corrections, which operates the facility, denies all wrongdoing. We were able to track down several women still inside the detention center who saw the gynecologist at the center of this, Dr. Mahendra Amin, who denies wrongdoing. They agreed to talk to us, even though they say women face retaliation for talking to the media. At what point did you realize that you had had surgery? Um, I, when I woke up and I saw the incisions, it turns out that I didn't need the procedure that was performed. We did not predict that there were this many women and our government has not only not protected them from harm, but in some cases has retaliated against them and punished them when they have come forward this scandal escalated the week of the U.S. presidential election. While the world was consumed by the news cycle, ICE was quietly trying to deport women who saw Amin, potential key witnesses in the federal investigation. ICE denies these allegations and says they're fully cooperating. We found these women and reported their stories. Well, I've, I've noticed that the women, like the girls that are speaking up, they're getting deported, like they're getting rid of them. They're getting rid of us. I'm a nervous runner now. Um, I'll probably be boarding a flight to have deportation um, tonight, so I'm, you know, stressed out. How do you know you're being deported tonight? Um, my money's been taken out of my account. Um, usually when your um, account gets wiped out, and it, they max it out to zero, and it says check on there, and usually for deportation. Even though my, supposedly, my deportation got stopped, if I don't answer, it's because I'm not here or because something happened, you know? We filed stay requests with ICE. ICE has denied them. We have filed discretionary releases. We have filed stays of removal. They've all been denied. ICE's removal of women who are potential victims and plaintiffs to medical abuse, possible medical battery, possible fraud that occurred in that detention center, that is tampering with witnesses, it's interfering with the criminal investigation. It is retaliatory. Last week, after a flurry of bad press and pressure, a U.S. attorney's office agreed to pause all deportations of Amin patients. But then, within 25 hours, ICE backed out, saying someone at the top didn't agree to it. A federal judge weighed in, ordering a pause to deportations until February. But there are still countless women who have already been deported before testifying. That's exactly what happened to a woman named Euridia. She was deported to Mexico just three days after her surgery. Es muy apegada. Yo los protejo y pues caminamos todas juntas. Los chus. Nos ponemos metas 
en el grupo, pues de nosotros, en nuestra pequeña familia, <ríe> que le diga en nuestra pequeña familia, que son las niñas y yo. Siento bien a Yurima, hazle un pedacito de espacio. As a child, what did you know about America? Pues nada, empecé a pensar en la oportunidad, dije, ¿por qué no? ¿Por qué no para mejorar una vida mejor para mí y pues para mis papás y ayudar a mis hermanos? Once Yuridia arrived in the U.S., she found work, got married, and started a family. But soon after, she experienced a series of domestic violence incidents. In one altercation, Yuridia ran to the neighbor's house. They called the police. When they arrived, there was no translator. Yuridia was arrested. Her partner was not. Este, a mí nunca se me dijo por qué me arrestaron si yo fuera la que yo estaba golpeada. Y todavía sin no tener familia. El, la angustia que me provocaron el que, que yo, ¿qué iba a pasar con mis hijas? Estaban con mi vecina, pero... Yuridia was sent to Irwin County Detention Center. And 10 weeks later, she was ordered to see a doctor. Why did you originally see the doctor when you were there? Cuando yo llegué, llegué con una inflamación del lado de mi costilla izquierda y muy débil. Yo me sentía muy débil. Was that because of the domestic violence incident? Sí, porque cuando ese me vino, pues fue parte de los golpes. Entonces, uh, yo lo traía a mi costi, mi es e inflamada. Me pasa a una oficina y me doy cuenta que es un ginecólogo. Es cuando él me dice, entra el doctor, la que habla español inglés, y me dicen se me, que se me va a hacer un solograma. Y de ahí veo al doctor que pone en la cámara un condón. Entonces lo introduce en mi vagina. Y empieza a checar, la, la, la pantalla está de este lado y me dice, tienes un quiste y una infección. So, I have your, uh, some of your medical records here. When you first went to see Dr. Amin, did you have, and I'm listing the symptoms that are, that are listed here, did you have chronic pelvic pain? No. Bef before your surgery, at any point before your surgery, did you have chronic pelvic pain? No. The second diagnosis that he has here is a medical term that means um, basically that you had a very heavy period that lasted longer than normal. Is that true? No. Mi periodo nada más ha sido de siete días y ha sido frecuente cada mes igual. The next one uh, is that it's a medical term for, for pain during menstruation. Mi menstruación ha sido normal y nunca he tenido dolores porque de hecho yo no tomo tampoco ni medicina para los dolores de menstruación ni nada de eso. Yuridia says Amin gave her an injection, which caused her to sweat and have abnormal mood swings. She cried a lot. Three weeks later, Amin told Yuridia the cysts were still there and that she needed to have surgery. Empiezo a preocuparme y yo acostada estoy viendo los focos. Veo a un doctor que viene, me pone una jeringa en la manguerita del suero que tenía y de repente ya no veo nada, ya no supe nada de mí. Cuando despierto, pues estoy en mi habitación y me empiezo a ver. Cuando me quito, que me dicen que me vista, los puntos en mi... Un punto aquí, un punto aquí, un punto aquí. Y adolorida aquí, entonces empiezo a tener mucho dolor. Y me empiezo a agarrar así el estómago, y, pero adentro me siento vacía. No me dijeron qué me hicieron, no me dieron un papel, no me enseñaron qué me hicieron. Que yo me sentí como me estaban tratando. Me sentía como un experimento. I just wanted to be absolutely clear. D d before you had surgery, did you know you were going to have surgery and did you consent to it? No, no. A team of the country's top OBGYNs evaluated Uridia's medical records and found there was no clear indication or medical reason for her transvaginal ultrasound, hormonal injection, or surgery based on her medical records. Amin continues to deny all wrongdoing and insists the independent doctors only received partial records. One doctor who reviewed records said Amin may have saved a woman's life. So in the home care instructions, like the aftercare instructions that you received, uh, or at least that are in your medical records, it says that you were supposed to have a follow-up appointment with the doctor after two weeks. Did you have that appointment? No, no tuve una cita después. Me, a mí me deportaron el día 31 de agosto del 2020, a tres días de mi operación. Yuridia says she was crippled with pain as she was forced to board a bus, flight, and then two more buses to get back to her parents' home in Saltillo, Mexico, where her daughters, all U.S. citizens, were waiting for her. If people are deported from the United States, the 
opportunities to return to the United States are extremely limited. The only way that they could return is if their original deportation order is reopened. That's very difficult to do. Against all odds, Yuridia and her six daughters may be able to return to the U.S. A judge has agreed to reopen Yuridia's removal proceedings, not because she saw a mean or had gynecologic surgery, but due to her status as a Violence Against Women Act, or a VAWA, recipient. She could now be eligible for an adjustment of legal status. Sí. <laughs> Porque ya, ya lo, yo lo miraba como todavía que se te va a tardar mucho y ya, ya. De que te digo las cosas como lo mejor que podemos esperar y lo peor que podemos esperar y vamos a ver dónde caemos en ese medio. Okay. ok. Un gato, mira un perro, allá va un perro. You've experienced such extreme trauma in the U.S. Why do you want to go back? Su oportunidad de vida es allá. Entonces, como madre, yo no puedo negarle a una oportunidad a un hijo por miedo. Dame la mano. Es por mis hijas. Es por mis hijas que yo salgo y, y me paro. 